Hello, welcome again to Holy Week, and this is Holy Tuesday. I'm Pastor Mike, and this is going to be kind of our pause for the day as I did yesterday. I just recorded this brief uh, little video as a time of meditation and pause. Again, its purpose is in the midst of this week as we move toward especially Good Friday and then Easter that we take moments to pause and remember why we are what we are about. So, let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you have called us to follow. Grant that our love may not grow cold in your service, and that we may not fail or deny you in the time of trial. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this Tuesday is from Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. Now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength, he says. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel. Who has chosen you. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Now, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. In order that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Then the gospel for this Tuesday of Holy Week comes from John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, what should I say? 
Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of the world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you ha may have become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. Well, brothers and sisters, in this Tuesday, he continues to get closer and closer to the night in which he was betrayed, and then eventually Friday, where that late hour Judas betrays him. You get the time in front of Pilate and all of those things. And even in this moment, as it gets closer, he reminds his followers, everyone there, of important realities. And one of them is that great agricultural metaphor. Unless a grain falls into ground, it does not bear much fruit. It is the inevitability of that thing, is that as death happens, life springs out of it. And that is what God does. We will be reminded soon over these holy three days that out of death, God draws us into life. Over and over he does this. Again, the Exodus account. The, our Jewish brothers and sisters will be soon celebrating the Passover. Death to life. Over and over again, brothers and sisters, this is how he works. Even with the miracle of Lazarus, but he makes it clear. And there are moments that, even in the midst of this, we feel like maybe we are entombed amidst these COVID realities and little deaths surround us, even as we watch the real deaths out in the world. Again, to call out of death into life is not to, again, brush aside death. It is not to be a Pollyanna and put a silver lining on it. It is to know that through the hardness, through the cross, God works and is not absent. But in the moments of death and worry and sorrow and pain, God does not abandon us but walks and continues to draw, push, carry us to life. And his work bears much fruit. Be reminded of that, that lens, as we continue this march through Holy Week and through this interesting viral time. And now, brothers and sisters, let us turn our hearts and minds to prayer. Uh, there will be pauses, I, as I encourage you to listen for those pauses. Please take moments to uh, meditate and bring to mind what you wish to be prayed for. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all the gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. For the communion of faith that is your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern the nations of the world. For people in countries ravaged by strife, or warfare, or disease, or famine. For all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land. For all those in need of healing in mind, body, or spirit. Those on our prayer chain, and those who name aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the end, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing and have a blessed day. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forever. Amen. Blessings. And may you continue to find peace as we move through this week.